and 1515 to William Knox, who worked as a farmer. All that is known of his mother is that her maiden name was Sinclair and that she died when John was just a child. John was said to have enrolled in the University of Glasgow in 1522. He is stated to have studied under John Major, known as one of the greatest scholars of his time. How long Knox remained at the college is uncertain. He was ordained to priesthood at some date near 1540. He continued serving as late as 1543. But rather than taking up parochial duties in parish, he became tutor of two sons of Hugh Douglas of Long Nidry and the son of John Cockburn of Ormston. Both of these lairds had embraced a new religious idea of reformation, which was sweeping Europe. Interesting fact! Did you know John Knox is considered to be the greatest new reformer in the history of Scotland? Wow! John Knox first publicly professed the Protestant faith about the end of 1545, and it is believed that his actual conversion was probably the result of his close friendship with a man by the name of George Wishart. Wishart, who had returned to Scotland in 1544 after a certain period of banishment, had preached in favour of the Reformation. John Knox became one of Wishart's closest associates, even acting as his bodyguard, defending Wishart against the supporters of Cardinal David Beaton, leader of the Scottish anti-Protestant minister in St. Andrews. <coughs> Sadly, Wishart was tried for heresy and burnt at the stake in March 1546. Knox continued on and was called to the Protestant ministry at St. Andrews, which was intimately associated with the reformer's career. Apparently, there appears to have been no regular ordination, but he had already been ordained as a priest in Church of Rome. Interesting facts! Did you know John Knox is a successful author? A book that he wrote goes by the name of The History of the Reformation in Scotland. While staying in the castle of St. Andrews, a place of refuge for many Protestants, the castle was attacked by outside forces and Knox became a French galley slave for 19 months. He experienced many hardships and miseries, which were said to permanently damage his health. He was exiled to England on his release in 1549. While in exile, he was licensed to work in the Church of England, where he quickly rose in the ranks to serve King Edward VI of England as the royal chaplain. In his position, he influenced on the text of the Book of Common Prayer. There, in England, he met and married his wife Marjorie. They had two sons, Nathaniel, who later died at Cambridge in 1580, and Eliezer, who became vicar of Clacton Magna in the Archdeaconry of Colchester and died in 1591. But when Mary Tudor ascended the throne and re-established Roman Catholicism, Knox was forced to quit his position and leave the country. He first moved to Geneva and then to Frankfurt. In Geneva, he met John Kelvin. He gained experience from the knowledge of Reformed theology and Presbyterian politics from John Kelvin. He created a new order of service, which was eventually adopted by the Reformed Church in Scotland. He soon left Geneva to head of the English Refugee Church in Frankfurt, but he was forced to leave over the differences concerning liturgy ending his association with the Church of England. When he returned to Scotland, he led the Protestant Reformation to, in Scotland in the partnership of Scotland Protestant nobility. This movement is seen by many as a revolution because it did lead to the Mary of Guise, who governed the country in the name of her young daughter Mary, Queen of Scots, to leave. Knox continued to serve as a religious leader of the Protestants throughout Mary's reign. Even in some interviews with Mary, Queen of Scots, Knox admonished her for supporting Catholic practices. Eventually, Mary was imprisoned and James VI enthroned in her place. He called for her to be executed. Do you know any personal information about John Knox? Yes, I do. John Knox made a second marriage in 1564, which was greatly talked of at the time because apparently the bride was remotely connected to the royal family. Also, because John Knox was 50 while she was a maiden of only 17. Her name was Margaret Stewart. 
daughter of Andrew, Lord Stuart of Ochiltree. They had three daughters. That's all. Thank you for your time. That was very interesting. Interesting fact! Did you know the youngest of Knox's and Margaret's daughters, named Elizabeth, became the wife of the famous John Welsh, Minister of Air? Sadly, John Knox passed away on November 24th, 1572. He was buried in the churchyard of St. Giles by the Earl of Morton, the Regent of Scotland. Here lieth the man, whose life never feared the face of man, who hath been often threatened with a dagger, but yet hath ended his day in peace and honour. Are you John Knox? No, I'm just No, I'm just